Has anyone seen these two top-level Koreans? Why does the GSL not broadcast their qualifiers? And what does a hamburger for left-handed people look like? All of these questions will be answered in today's episode of StarCraft Today. StarCraft Today. Your favorite StarCraft news show. GSL Season 3 qualifiers happened past Monday and Tuesday, but rather than talking about the results, the talk of the town were two missing Korean players. Trap, the king of 2021, winning six Premier tournaments and keeping Protoss hopes and dreams alive, did not sign up for the GSL Season 3 qualifier. There has been no statement yet, but as he is a 28-year-old male, it is widely believed to be related to his mandatory military service in the Korean army. The same counts for Rogue, the three-time world champion winning BlizzCon 2017 and IAM Katowice in 2018 and in 2020 did not sign up for the qualifiers either. It is extra sour for Rogue as he had a real shot at perhaps being the first player to ever win five GSLs in a lifetime. Both players still seem to have committed to playing some tournaments during August, but most likely will not have been capable of finishing the GSL season and thus decided not to participate. I wish both of these players the best of luck in their endeavors and I hope to see them back after their mandatory military service. Moving on to the actual results of the GSL Season 3 qualifiers, we saw Astrea as well as Rainer qualify for the foreigners. Well, I say we saw, but in reality we didn't really see anything, as for the 12th year in a row, the GSL decided to not broadcast their qualifiers and we didn't see anything. We had to rely on F5-ing Liquipedia and checking the brackets on challenge ourselves. A terrible thing, I'm not quite sure why GSL doesn't just use community casters, for all I care forces them to stream on YouTube or Africa if they don't like Twitch, but not Broadcasting the qualifiers makes absolutely zero sense to me. Anyway, on the second day we saw Scarlet and Special try again as well, but for a second day in a row they did not manage to qualify. Scarlet losing to both Cure and Prince 0-2-0-2, and Special losing to Gumiho with a 2-0 score and to Armani in the qualifying match with a 1-2 scoreline. Moving on to games that actually were broadcast to us in the TSL 9. And boy, did we have some bangers last weekend, starting with a Home Story Cup Finals rematch between Clem and Serral. In game one, we saw a failed Hellbat attack put Serral in such a dominant position that finishing the game ended up being a piece of cake for the 24-year-old Finn. In game two, we had a more even early game until Clem attacked with, yep, once again Hellbats in the mid game. Serral cleaned it up, droned up and took a significant supply lead. Later on in the game with some Nidus action in the main and big attacks at the fourth and fifth, Serral managed to secure the 2-0 victory in the best of three and put himself in the quarterfinals. Another Home Story Cup rematch was Astrea versus Rainer, and just like last time in Home Story Cup, Astrea was the first to draw blood. In a phenomenal 22 minute macro game, he managed to best Rainer's Lurker Hydra composition with a powerful Archon Carrier Force. Game 2 is a game that will go down in history, at least for now, as it is this week's Game of the Week. Being down 1-0 and after an awful start in this game number 2, it felt like Rainer was about to be forced to tap out when Astrea's stalker came knocking at his 4th base door. But with a quick link run by to the 4th base of Astrea and a narrow hold at home, Rainer at least survived, for now, but was still in quite a pickle. Astrea continued adding more oracles to his low gas gateway unit composition, forcing Rainer to be on creep near Queens the entire time, while Astrea continued expanding and increasing his already large economy. The pace of the game changed a bit when both players lost a significant part of their eco and all of a sudden each unit started to matter a whole lot more. Small fights kept happening around the map, but despite Astrea's worker advantage, he could not close out the game and eventually ended up dying versus Rainer's Lurkers in a fantastic, action-packed Zerg vs Protoss match. In the final game of the series, we saw Astrea make a terrible mistake in mispositioning his Stalker in the wall in the natural, allowing Rainer's Lynx to come in, scout everything, force the Archon drop back home, and on top of that, take out six workers. With that lead, Rainer starts sending in roaches and banelings off of 82 drones. Astrea defends well initially, but in the end caves to the pressure and is forced to tap out as Rainer wins the series 2-1. Another interesting match in this round of the winner's bracket was Showtime vs Maru. The Korean Terran, who was sporting a 93% win rate in matches versus foreign tosses, got his sixth ever match loss versus a foreign toss against Showtime in a fantastic 2-1 series with multiple late games, Showtime showed his ability to go head-to-head -head 
with the best in the world when it comes to the late game and even come out on top. A fantastic series all around and an impressive win by the German Protoss. The biggest upset we saw happen in the lower bracket matches was perhaps Special vs Clam. Clam managed to snatch game number one rather quickly with some superior early game and leveraged into a win from there. In game number two, however, we saw a minor misstep out of Clam in forgetting to siege his tanks in time. Special pounced on the opportunity and tied up the series. In the final game of the series, we saw Special open up with a double starport opener, forcing the tanks of his opponents to unsiege and making Clem's third base very vulnerable. Another minor error out of Clem, accidentally sieging two of his tanks in range of specials, and just like that, Clem lost all control of the game, eventually is forced to tap out, and with that special, eliminated the final Team Liquid player out of the Team Liquid Star League number 9. That left us with one more round of winner bracket play before we got to the offline portion in Utrecht in the Netherlands. And in that winner bracket we saw another home store recovery match as Serral took on Gumiho. In Krefeld, Germany, the tricky Terran from South Korea was too strong for the Finnish Zerg, but this time around Serral was ready for the tricks and took a comfortable 2-0 victory. The second quarterfinals in the winner bracket was between Raynor and Hero, a much anticipated match as Hero is known as the best Protoss vs Zerg player and Raynor is known to be one of the best CVP players in the world. The last time they fought was in WTL a little over 3 weeks ago and back then Hero managed to win rather easily with a 2-0 score. This series seemed to go down a similar path as Hero managed to put on never ending pressure in game number one with a string of adept attacks, leaving Raynor's economy in shambles. Raynor tried to get a defense together for the 200 supply pushout, but did not manage to hold on, and thus Hero took game number one. In the second game, we saw a three base charge lot all in get destroyed so hard that Hero might actually end up retiring the build. A perfect response out of Raynor, which only left Hero one option to GG out and get into game number 3 as quickly as he could. And in that game number 3 we finally got what we were promised from these players. A fun, action packed, double upgraded Protoss Force trying to pull Raynor apart. Sadly for Hero, Raynor is no pushover and despite the Korean Protoss' best efforts on inflicting damage, Raynor stayed alive and managed to transition into a lurker army which Hero simply could not deal with. And here Hero for a second game in a row had nothing to do but GG, tap out and acknowledge that at least this time around, Raynor was the superior player. The third quarter final between Time and Lambo featured two long and interesting macro games in which both times, after a long back and forth, the Chinese Terran player managed to come out ahead and thus win the series 2-0. The final quarterfinals of the winner bracket was a very one-sided affair with Showtime blasting Neep off the map in less than 12 minutes of total game time and that leads us to the following bracket which will be played in a couple of weeks from now offline in Utrecht, the Netherlands. TSL 9 wasn't the only StarCraft 2 action that we had this week as as always we also had three ESL Open Cups starting on Sunday in Korea. And in Korea we saw the Shopify Terran Beyond take his second ESL Open Korea Cup in a row Last week it was versus Australia in the finals, this week the victim was Creator, who got destroyed in a rather one-sided 3-1 finals. Over in Europe, our young Danish friend Max Pax dropped only a single map in the entire tournament and 3-0 sweeped Clem in the finals. A fantastic performance which puts his total amount of ESL Open Cup wins at 26. The final cup in North America saw beyond second finals in two days. This time, however, the Korean Zerg Solar was just a little bit too strong for Bian and thus managed to take out the South Korean Terran with a 3-1 score. Congratulations to all the winners this week in the ESL Open Cups and that leads us to the clip of the week in which this week we have a Dutch content creator who is forced to pause his game because of, well, because of what exactly? It's gonna be real confused by the timing of these links, honest to God. Yeah, but he's so big. No. You have to put him like over 
I thought she was dying. It's just a spider. It was pretty big though. It was a huge spider actually. It's like this yay big. As they would say. I'd like everyone to know that no spiders were harmed in the making of this video. And put them in a glass and took him outside. So no worries there. Alright, I'll thank you all for watching. But not before we answer the final question. What in the world is a left-handed burger? As in 1998, on the 1st of April, the Burger King took out a full-page ad in the USA Today describing a burger for left-handed people. It bragged that the burger was rotated a full 180 degrees as well as a rearrangement of the condiments, allowing left-handers to have it their way. Although it was a rather obvious April Fool's joke, Reportedly, hundreds of people asked for a left-handed burger in the days after, and even some right-handers specified that they were not looking to buy a left-handed burger, but just wanted the regular right-handed one. You can always trust on the Americans to fall for a good old April Fool's jokes. Thanks all so much for watching to this episode of StarCraft Today. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time for a new video. Thank you for your time, and bye-bye. <laughs>